Hi guys, how are you doing? And welcome back. So in this video, I will show you how to set up that offline depot for installing VCF9. VMware VCF9 needs a depot where it can get the, the installation files. That can be an online depot. That means when you're starting to deploy VCF9, it will grab those files at that moment from the internet. But you also can set up a offline depot. That means you can download the files beforehand and then place them on a web server. And then that web server can be air gapped, of course, so you don't need actual connection to the internet uh, for that web server, so it can serve in a dark side situation. And the way I want to do it is set it up to run from my Synology. Synology is a very capable NAS storage solution and they have a web server component in their running as well. So let's get into the video and let me show you how I set it up. Here we are in my lab environment. The first thing you need to do is of course, download that VCF download utility. This is the utility which will actually download the binaries from the Broadcom repository. So you will need this. I will do the downloading on a Ubuntu server, a intermediary, so to, so to speak. So that's the way you can do it as well. If you have a dark side, there is some server you need to actually download content from the internet, scan it and run it through virus scanners, etc., and then copy it over to your dark side, right? So that Ubuntu server could be your connection to the internet. So that's the machine I will be using to download the binaries and then move the binaries from there to my Synology, set up the web services in Synology, and then we will be able to use it as a offline depot. So let's get into that. The first thing is, of course, the download utility. This is the this is WinSCP. I've connected WinSCP to my Ubuntu server. Now in that Ubuntu server, in my home directory, I've already copied over this file. So the download utility is already in there and I need to extract that. You can also see I have a file in there that has the name Broadcom token. You will need that Broadcom download token if you want to actually download something from the Broadcom repositories. Right, so make sure that you have that token, make sure that the token is valid. So the only thing you need to do on your intermediary server, in my case, my Ubuntu server, which is connected to the internet, is create a file and the content of that file needs to be that string, that token string. That's the only thing you need to do, but make sure that it is there. So I've already created a directory where I will unpack that utility because that utility is a tar file and it is gun zipped so it is packed I it's compressed I need to unpack it and I will unpack it in this directory so if we go to the SSH terminal of the server let's real quick grab that and this is the one corresponding to that you can see here if you start that download utility this is the utility which is already in here and this is the command line for that. I've already done some downloading, so you can see that all the binaries were already downloaded in this case. Now, what this download utility does, it downloads the binaries, and then it is for version nine, of course, and I am storing those downloads in this Ubuntu server in the slash depot folder. So if I go to the slash depot folder, Let's use WinSCP to make our life simpler. So let's go to the depot folder. This is the depot folder and we can see that it has created that folder prod in there. In the prod folder, it has created a file structure and a folder structure which is needed to serve on a offline repository. So leave this intact, don't edit or adjust this. If you go, you can browse of course in it, go into the metadata, you will see manifest files, etc. JSONs in there. The most important thing, the binaries are living in the comp folder and then they are neatly organized in different folders. The nice thing is if you're missing a binary in one of these folders, for example, if you go into the HCX and you are missing the binary, it is not there. The download utility didn't download that for you. You can, of course, log into the downloads portal on, for, on Broadcom and then download that binary separately and then copy it over in that folder, right? So in my case, the utility, the download utility, it has download, downloaded everything, all the binaries, except one of those failed. But if I go and check into this directory, I can see that it is there. If I would to um, reconsider downloading this, if the, I can just do it manually as well and place this in this folder. 
So now that that download utility, the VCF download utility download tool has downloaded all those binaries in my Ubuntu server. This is the intermediate server I am using, which is connected to the internet. I need to move the content of that slash depot folder in the root of the server to my Synology. And it has to be in a specific place on the Synology. For that, we need web services on the Synology. So let's go back to our Synology here and let's minimize the file station. Let's open up the package manager and you need to make sure that web station is actually installed on your Synology and up and running because this is the web server component we are going to need in order to turn this into a web server, which will be able then to serve our binaries as a offline depot server. So install the web station on the Synology. Once that is done, we need to enable it. And now that we have enabled it, we can open it, run to the web service tab here. You will see the default service and we need to click that because we need to change something in here or make sure that a option is selected. So select the default service in the web service tab, click on edit, make sure that the HTTP backend server is Apache because we are going to use some files which are specifically for the Apache web server to do the authentication, right? So make sure that you change the backend server and the default, uh, the personal website backend server, you can enable or disable it, leave it as it is. But the HTTP backend server needs to be Apache. Once you've done that, click on save. And now your web station is enabled. Your Synology is now a web server. So if you have done that and you open up file station, you will see that there is a web directory in there. This is the place we have to place. This is the folder we have to copy over that content of your of the intermediate Ubuntu machine I am using to download all those binaries. So if I go back to my SSH terminal or better yet, let's go to win each when SCP and I am in the slash depot slash prod folder, as you can see in here, the content of the prod needs to go into the web station. The way to do that is of course, you need to copy it over, right? And how did I do that? It is very easy if you have that Synology. If your Synology is available on your internal network only, not connected to the internet, you need to make sure that you get the files from that Ubuntu intermediate server. The way I'm doing it is I created a SFTP connection to that Ubuntu intermediate server where I downloaded all the files using that VCF download utility. It is downloaded in the Depot folder. Right. If I open it, I can see that the prod folder is there. If I browse, browse into the prod folder, I can see that the folder structure, manifest files, JSON files, everything is in there to serve on my depot. So that means we need to copy this folder over to the web folder on my Synology. Right. So as you can see here, that depot folder contains the prod folder that has been created by the download utility. I'm going to copy that over to the web. And that's the way to do that. This folder can be fairly big, 80 to 90 gigabytes. So take your time, wait for the process to finish. Now, in the meantime, this is copying over the data to the Synology. And the way that the cloud builder, the new one for VCF9, that is the VCF installer, will connect to the depot is default using a SSL certificate. I don't want to mess with SSL certificates on my Synology. This is a dark side, so to speak. It is not connected to any other network. So SSL is not a thing, right? And if it is in your case, you may you need to make sure that you have uh, a valid SSL certificate in there. I will leave the link to the documentation on how to configure that in the description. For me, it's not the case. So I will disable the SSL check for the VCF installer. This is the VMware Cloud Foundation installer. And if I log in here, I have a depot configured already. So let's go to the depot settings. And you can see it is connected to my Synology NAS on port 80 already, right? Using a username and a password. So the first step is to disable this SSL check in the VCF installer. How are we going to do that? Let's set up a SSH session to that installer. That's here. Login as the user VCF and then of course password 
and my password is here let's copy this over real quick this is just a demo situation so passwords are disposable let's go now you are here you need to elevate the permissions yeah your uh, user permissions so in order to do that enter the su command for super user enter your password and now we are root on that appliance so now that we are root and where are we we are in the home slash home slash vcf directory we need to edit one specific file to disable that ssl check so let's go and edit this file of course i will leave the, the location and description uh, of this file and that property in the in the video description you can find it on my website if i open this file with vi now i have to scroll down to the bottom and at the bottom i will add one specific parameter and that's this one the lcm depot adapter https enabled is false add this parameter to this file it is not there so you cannot just change this to false the parameter is not there you need to edit the file and enter that uh, the whole string in there once we've done that you can right quit from here and then you need to restart the lcm service on this vcf installer appliance in order to do that that is the command the system ctl for system control restart lcm once you've done that just give it a few minutes a few seconds to initiate and now if you go to your depot settings and you added the connection or you add a connection and you set up port 80 in there it will accept a non ssl connection to a depot server perfectly fine for a dark side a disconnected situation now in the meantime my files the binaries have been copied over from that intermediate ubuntu server which is um, acting as my so to speak proxy to the internet i'm downloading all the files there from the internet and then i'm transferring them over to the synology so the synology has copied over all those files using that sftp connection and if i go into the prod directory there are two additional files you need to create in here because if you go to the vc of installer you see that you have a username and a password you need to enter to authenticate for the depot it is expecting that and the way to do that is to create a ht pass wd file this is a password file for apache for the web server and you need to create this and then you need to also create a ht access file for apache which will tell apache that it actually needs to use that password file in order to give access to this directory and i've already created those files i will leave the content of both of the files in the description of this video and also you can um, find it on my website so the ht access file of course this is the content you need to adjust it adjust the path and tell it where that ht pass wd file is living this is the file which actually uh, con contains the username and the password to authenticate for this web server and then we have the ht pass wd file this is a password file for apache the user is vcf and the password is also vcf but of course i am creating this with a utility and that utility is then hashing that password you can find on the internet a lot of those websites which can generate a simple ht pass wd file for you for apache just copy it over and now you have a file in a correct format to use in your synology web service in your offline depot right so that's what i'm doing just the easy way so these two files you need to create them and then place them in the same directory now if we go to the depot and we enter vcf as a username here as well and click on configure it will connect to that offline depot which is living on the synology nas it will find the installer files the binaries in there and it will tell me that port 80 communication is perfectly fine no errors in there we are using a non-secure connection and that's okay because this is a disconnected offline service right so this synology has no connections to the internet of course we can test if the directory authentication is working because if we just open up a website 
and try to access that IP address. That's the IP address of my Synology and try to access that prod directory. It will prompt me for a username and a password. This is the username and password which Apache is prompting you for based on that HT X file and that HT pass WD file, right? So my username is VCF, password is VCF as well. If I sign in, I can now browse the content of this directory. And this is exactly what that depot server, that VCF installer is looking for on a depot server. And there we have it, a offline VCF depot for installing VCF9. Also disconnected from the internet using a intermediate Ubuntu server with the VCF downloader utility to download the files and then actually transfer them over to the Synology I will be using in my dark side setup. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something new in this video. Don't forget to click on the like and subscribe buttons below the video. Helps out my channel a lot. And for now, take care and see you in the next video. Bye.